I'm back. Where you ask? Mm, maybe that gives you a little hint. Stay tuned, I'm gonna take you guys through an incredible showcase, plus tell you why I'm back here. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Well, if you couldn't guess, I'm back in Texas. I'm here with my good friend, Jack Harju, here with Billy from Brothers Water Gardens. Built the most incredible DIY project I've ever seen. And I'm here for two reasons. One, because I never saw this thing finished with all the landscape and everything else. Two, Matt's asked us back to do a pretty incredible project, which I'm gonna show you towards the end of this video. It's one of a kind. It's a one of a kind project. There's only one other like it right now that I know of, and that's back at Aquascape. A few Few years back I ordered something special and Matt got one of them somehow or another but I'm gonna take you through that but before we do that let me take you on an unbelievable walkthrough of this project we created a couple years ago it looks amazing I said I'd take you on a quick walkthrough. I almost forgot, before I take you on this walkthrough, I have to let you know what Chris is doing. Chris, what do you got going on? So glad you asked that. I am out here with Ed Ballou, the pond professor, as you guys all know from here on the channel. And then we also have Mr. Rusty Reed, the turtle man himself. And we are out here prepping for one of Aquascape's many regional events this year. Where the heck are we? <laughs> we are in Churubusco, Indiana, which is also known as Turtle Town, USA. We have some really, really cool stuff that we're gonna be doing here. We haven't even gone inside and checked out your turtles. I have seen them. I've seen pictures, I've seen videos. We've worked a lot together, but I've not been to your house. So this is the first time here. We got a really neat project. In oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to show it to you. I'm excited for this project. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. This is gonna open up a pond for our turtles to move outside when we relocate our koi into this new aquascape pond. And who isn't happy to get an aquascape pond? Oh, that's incredible. So the koi that you just showed us, the mm -hmm. ones in this pond over here, right. pull those guys out, put them in the brand new pond, take some of the turtles. They can be out here all summer long, Right, think? all summer wow. long. And then we have a greenhouse awesome. we put over that pond in the winter months. Oh. So there'll be a couple of turtles that stay out there year round. So guys, this is my first time here. And Ed, your schedule is very limited limited and you're kind of back and forth. So as I mentioned, this is going to be a regional event where other certified aquascape contractors and aspiring contractors will be out here as well, learning the whole ecosystem approach to water features. And you have been the point person along with Rusty on fine tuning this project and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So real quick, what are you guys planning on doing during this trip here and why the heck am I here? So what we're trying to do, because it's a regional event, this is a massive pond. So this is a recreational pond like we discussed. This is a pond that's designed for a wide variety of applications. You could have fish, you could have turtles, you have frogs frogs, wildlife. You could also go in the water when it's hot out. You could let it freeze over in the winter time. Gives you 365 day a year enjoyment, which is great because Northern Indiana, just like Chicago, we want to be able to use these things all year round. So sitting outside, you have that incredible gazebo area. So you're going to be able to interact with this. It's going to bring the sight and sound and water right to the back of the home. And it's going to become that repository for your fish. So I think it's going to be a perfect little mixture of all these different elements coming together. And you're a water guy. Aww. I mean, you love your turtles. Yeah. You love all the aquatic life. So I know you have a lot of input from you and Marilyn of what you want, you know, how you want this to be utilized. So you want to tell us a little bit about your vision when you showed me that gazebo initially and sent me some of those pictures. Well, it's a beautiful place yep. to just sit, which is something I don't do very much of, <laughs> but maybe I will, right? But either way, walking past it, it's a beautiful entrance to the Blackwater Turtle Refuge. It's a beautiful site. When you drive in, it's right next to the driveway. It's right outside of our door. And the sound, you'll be able to hear this in the house, in the bedrooms, in in the kitchen. It'll just be a really nice touch to come home, be able to take a dip in the pond, to let mm -hmm. the dogs play in the pond, to see the koi right outside the house like that. I can't wait awesome. to have that finish. We're well, really looking forward to it. So that's fantastic. So Greg Woodstock was out here. He met right. with you, looked at some of your turtles. That's when I first heard about doing this project. So what we're trying to do, because you're a turtle rescue, we're trying to get back. So the regional build is going to be bringing in other certified contractors from around the Midwest where they could learn the latest and greatest technology. 
technology, wetland filtration, the intake bays, how we could filter and manage all this water to really deliver some incredible water quality for you. And I think that's really important. Like you said, you, you want your dogs in there as well, which I completely forgot about. And I know I watched them run around all over the place earlier today, but four or five, there's four, four dogs right yep. now. So four dogs, we're gonna have a shallow little beach entry for them mm -hmm. to get into the water as well as access that wetland filter. So it's gonna be enjoyment for the yeah. entire family. And that was neat. That was something we had asked you about was yeah. an area that the dogs could go in, yep. easy in and out for the dogs. And you never forgot that. No, I uh, laid I, it out with that right in mind. I think time. that's really important because we all love our pets yeah. and they're part of the family. So we want them to get in the water and that's the beauty of a recreational pond. It's designed for all these different things. So it's not just a swimming pool, it's mm -hmm. designed for all these different elements. So and that's why we want to bring in all the certified contractors from around the Midwest to help us finish this off. So Chris is here right now with myself. We have Chris Yaks here and Chris Wilson is on the way. So it's a lot of Chris. <laughs> so we want to try to get a lot of the prep work done because it's a giant feature. There's no way we can do it in the allotted time of the actual event. So we want to get a good 60, 70% of it completed before everybody arrives. That way when everybody gets here, we can kind of just focus on the details as well as the understanding of everything. And then you could do your whole thing and you could show them all the incredible animals that you have. Oh yeah. Site. We yeah. like to be able to show people the turtles and, and we teach can't, them about it. And we it. can't forget the cows. Cows are there. <laughs> yep. It's going to ride one. <laughs> no, I am definitely not riding one. <laughs> so like Ed and Rusty just said, it's a recreational yeah. pond, right? So there is a lot of work cut out for us. In order to be fair to the attendees and the minimal amount of time that we have booked out for the event, we're going to get a lot of this project done. So that's why I'm here. That's why Chris Yax is here. That's why Chris Wilson is coming. We're actually going to be back for the event itself, but we have a lot of work over the next three, four days trying to get done and get prepped. So why don't we take a walk over there, Ed? And I know there's a design that you've worked with with Rusty on. Yep. Maybe we should go to the side of the project and actually show you guys what's going on. I'm ready. And it's a good thing we got super view on now because we got Superman over there. Hey. <laughs> okay, so real quick, yep. before we get into the design, there's another, there he is, one of the Chris's, <laughs> Team 3 Chris. Yeah! Team Three Chris, the best Chris, right there, Mr. Chris Yax. No, I'm not. The Aquascapes best. You're the, of Michigan. You're the best, Chris. Oh, you. The Hoosier oh, you. Pond guy. You. No, you. So Chris is out here. He's gonna help us with the prep work. So he's kind of the on location point man, which is always Correct. essential to have on projects it, like this. There's no other way we could pull it off. So Chris came out, met with Rusty. Right, December. Around, December, right, yeah. right before the holiday. Right before the holidays. Yeah. So he came out here. Snow was flying. Wanted to sit down, meet with Rusty, make sure that we were able to pull everything off, check in elevation looking at the space because it takes an eye to understand what we're doing here. I wasn't able to come on out, so Chris was the main man. So he scheduled everything, hooked up with Rusty over here. We got some pictures of the area, and then what we did, we started coming up with a little bit of a sketch. Got it, okay. So you can kind of see here, so this is gazebo right there. Which that is, is that structure there. Awesome that. structure, yes. You got it. And what we're doing is I'm gonna start all the way up here in the corner. So we're gonna put a bio falls on the far edge of the gazebo, it's gonna fall into a small shallow stream. This is gonna be that beach entry area for the dogs to have access from the gazebo area. This will be just a shallow moving stream and it's going to widen out so into right a wet over here. It's going right to be right in this yeah. whole area. Yeah, so that beach is going to come in on the other side of that white line. Bio Falls is going to sit right back by the edge of the turf yep. grass almost. Okay. Wetland filter is going to be critical because we want to have the desired water quality so that's going to be responsible for all the nitrification processes as well as sedimentation. We're going to have a little bit of a waterfall connection point going from the wetland into the main pond and then we're going to have this deep open area here and that's going to allow for the recreation that's going to allow for fish that's going to also allow for people to actually access the water for maintenance or cooling off on a hot summer day so we'll have a little bit of an access point in the one corner pumps are going to be located in the far other end so we're really trying to accentuate the existing structures that we have right here on site gotcha so we're about 10 11 feet off of that patio mm -hmm. and this is the line of the patio that we just pointed out we're standing right about here yep you got it yeah so we'll have a little bit of a waterfall right back there so it looks like chris has done a lot of work already just kind of getting the site prep. I think what's hard to see too, Ed, and we see this all the time, is yeah. slopes on a job site. So what Chris is doing right now, right, is just zeroing everything out because we have about a two foot grade change from top of patio all the way to the gravel driveway, right? Correct. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is all the spoils that he dug out over here, we're going to build up on this low section, compact that, bring it up to the proper elevation. Once we have that place, then we can start actually carving out and yep. getting all the little shelves and all that stuff in place. That's really going to transform this entire project. Awesome. So we're going to be moving a lot of dirt today. We are. Um, displacing, placing, firming everything up. Yep. But yeah, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, I agree. Great spot. All right. Well, you can see Chris is chopping at the bit to I get really back am. going. He was working while we were giving the intro. So we're going to go ahead and give him some help. But yeah, we definitely have a lot of work left today and tomorrow in the next couple days to try and get this thing rolling. But we're going to go ahead and get back into digging this thing out, leveling the site off, and then really start fine tuning the shape. 
That's right, guys. The best Chris ever, our Chris Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, Chris! I can't believe I forgot like to do a little update this morning because by the time you got here late last night after driving the four hours in traffic, dude, how are you? Doing well. Actually, I'm struggling a little bit. First time out in the season. You know, down in Texas, we had an army helping at Adrian's, yeah. and I think you and Ed did most of the prep, and then Trevor went down and stuff. So I gotta work into it. Give me until about lunch, and I'll be back on top doing good things. Well, this is not old hat for you, dude. For those of you who don't know, he's been with Aquascape forever and is responsible for the success of so many contractors out there and will be a part of it along with myself and Ed running the regional event. Actually, I think it's mostly us. I think Ed's here a day. Yep. So you'll see a lot of his face throughout this video and in the upcoming video showing the event here at Rusty's. But you have done so many of these and the prep work is only part of it, right? It's the necessary work that has to go into pulling off a successful event, educating our contractors, right? That's correct. And now this one is a little bit more of an advanced feature, right? So we're doing a lot of the prep work. I would imagine that we get some contractors that have built a pond or two and are looking for next level stuff. I think this project is perfect because I've been bidding out a lot of these the past one or two years. And there's always some fear factor that builds into those mid-level guys. So it's a great mix of master CACs like Chris Yax here and then some great landscapers out there that are looking to take the next step. I love this project because we're gonna go through the bidding, we're gonna go through elevation. We'll have bare bones installed ready to rock and roll for the event, but this event will help you get to the next level. I love my 11 by 16s, one day bill upon days. No matter what you hit, you can get it done. This one seems smooth. We're not hitting anything. I'm really excited about this one. I'm glad you're here. Ed actually took off virtually when you got here. Yep. So we swapped Chris out for Ed or vice versa. And it's up to he, I, and then the other Chris. So it's basically team Chris out here for the next couple of days, getting this project ready to where we can pull off a successful event in a few weeks. So we really need to get moving, I think, and get this intake, get the liner in, all that stuff, and then hopefully start rocking the pond, huh? We're getting uh, spit on right now. It's still relatively dry. If we can have liner in, blocks in, and start strapping by lunch, I think that's a really good goal. Cool. And yeah, let's get after it. Buddy. All right, well, follow along with us. We're gonna have some fun today, and hopefully we beat some raindrops. <laughs> going in, got the intake dug, super, super happy with that. We've got a little bit of cleanup to do in here, and then we're gonna get an underlay. And then we've got liner going in. So we're making progress, and it's about an hour and a half to lunchtime, so looking good. little progress update fabric liner is in this is our intake area so we've got 24 large aqua blocks and then we have two pump vaults which you see sitting right there those are going to sit right in the middle and occupy the space of two of those large aqua blocks but then that the rest of the aqua blocks will occupy this footprint it will not be a square or a rectangle shape that you're seeing now on camera we will actually end up manipulating the shape which is part of the beauty of working with the epdm liner and the rock and gravel and then back over here you see the remainder of the pond we've got it basically 95 percent excavated the the reason that we did not excavate anything up here yet or cover it with fabric that's actually going to be a staging area for our machine which is sitting back over there and that will allow us to then rock in this entire backside over through here so when working on projects you never want to cut off access and understand the job site and the parameters of the scope of work and just because of some of the largest of some of the stones we need to have that size machine but also that reach in order to be able to get a lot of this stuff in there so we are looking good my man what all do you right think? I Rusty, mean, are we doing it? <laughs> i mean uh, it's incredible to watch you guys work Work and how you know everything i just i'm amazed that's awesome yep. awesome 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 well so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this tape measure right here i'm gonna grab that from you and we're gonna go ahead and measure it from all the way over there to all the way over to this back corner and see what size we need to cut that 40 by 100 foot roll liner to pull off one piece for this entire thing in through here once we get that piece cut then it will take literally all four of us we may even get Marilyn in on this to help us get this heavy liner in but it's going to be probably close to a ton worth of liner that we have to bring in this hole. Well, let's get this measured up and then we'll get going. So this big slab of stone is about seven feet by about 32 inches tall. And we are going to complete this entire edge using that stone and just having it go vertical. It's gonna be such an awesome look where the water comes right up to the edge. We've got circulation jets blasting against that wall. It's gonna be slick. All right, ready to go. Starts a gazebo, good, 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 good. As you can 
see we have water starting to fill this pond. Rusty's already rinsed it, and we are going to kind of be wrapping up here as part of the preparation for the regional event out here in Churubusco, Northwest Indiana. We feel really, really good about the progress that we made to this point. I think we actually got more done than we anticipated originally. We've got the deep section of the pond completely rocked in, and it looks absolutely fantastic using a lot of these big flat slabs, standing them upright and locking them together, getting to that five foot depth right off the patio. We ended up finding this beautiful piece of Black Hills rustic flagging. It's about a two inch thick piece, but the more important part is it's about 32 inches tall by seven feet in width. So it spans the entire patio right there. And that way the water is gonna come right up to that patio edge. A nice frizzling look, very, very large boulders flanking it and anchoring it in place. And then the other part that I'm super happy with is we got the intake bay roughed in. We started to set a handful of stones in through here. You can see the two pump vaults over there. Each one will house a five to nine pump. We've got all of our circulation jets ran. Gosh, Chris, we did an enormous amount of work over the last three days between Chris, Chris, and this Chris. The Chris Trio. The Chris Trio. I'm very confident. Like you said, the steep drops here, the stability, the things that do take the time, I think we nailed that and we've got that all buckled down and the rest of this stuff is just art. That's the fun stuff. That's why people come pay to see you and work with you and it's going to be a blast. It's coming together pretty quick. Awesome. And then Mr. Yax, Aquascapes of Michiana, you were such an integral part of the progress that we made to this point and will continue to be moving forward. So it's awesome you're going to be back for the event. But it's great. You had your equipment out here. Obviously, your know-how, your skill set, and you've been huge. Thank God we had some good weather, right? The last oh, couple yeah. days. It's been beautiful this week. A little bit chilly, a little bit cold. We got snowed on the first day, but it happens here in northern Indiana. So yeah, looking for a great event. I think we're in a great spot. We got a lot of great character boulders place looking absolutely amazing. So awesome. join us, guys. Chris, fantastic job, buddy. You know you're gonna be back. Obviously, Chris, you're gonna be back. And then Chris's guy Austin over there. And then we have like the better half of the Rusty Reed project over here. Also filming. What do you think so far? Are you enjoying watching the progress? I'm enjoying watching it and it's so neat to see it come together. I can't wait to finish it. Awesome, awesome. And Rusty, I know you're super pumped oh, too, man. Oh man, it's awesome to watch you guys work. I work with a lot of different people and to see this team so focused on what they do is it's really moving to me. You're a rare group, Team Aquascape, and I love watching <laughs> this coming. You're a rare group, man. You guys love what you do. You can see it and you're so conscientious about everything and everything in the area when you're working. It, it's really neat to see a team so focused on what they're doing. Yeah. And I love the progress I saw. I had no idea that you were going to go this far as prep work. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, sir. For those of you guys that don't know the Turtle Man, Rusty Reed, make sure to check out his channel right there. He does so much incredible work, mainly focused on alligator snapping turtles. At this point in your career and in your life and just doing some amazing things. You've seen him on our channel before. You've seen him over at Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guys page. But of course, check him out if you haven't already. We are going to kind of sign off here and kick it back over to Brian and Jack. All right, guys, I said I'd take you on a quick walkthrough. It's so awesome to be back here. We're at the headwaters of a 160 foot long stream that we created, I feel like about a year ago. And we're back here. I'm so excited to be back because the last time I was here, I was with Jack, the guy behind the camera. Uh, <laughs> Alan Decker, you guys finished this thing out. Ralph BZ was out here helping us from Pondscapes AZ and we created a one of a kind masterpiece. I think what I like about it so much is the mystery. And you guys know, especially that I watch Team Aquascape, how much I'm into the mystery and not being able to see everything from one area. We start up over here, we've got three spheres, a five to nine pump, plus a little bit of extra comes out from underneath them, feeding this waterfall over here. And what I like about this waterfall is just how natural the thing looks. This is actually actually two different rocks. You would never guess that. There's a joint right here that splits them. The way that Alan and Jack brought these two rocks together and then carved them in here just right so water comes off evenly this side and that side. Scours out the earth down below, creating a deeper pool here. Just looks so great. In fact, Jack, I think what we have to do is tell Matt to get a mini water loop right in here. There's just enough water to get an aquatic plant in here. It'll look so great. The other thing I like, well, Jack, just show him the bridge. So, Jack, you're standing on the bridge. This wasn't an original design. This was not. So, this was actually not part of the original design. We were just supposed to stop over here with a fountainscape. Then Matt said to me, hey, I really like those spheres. I want to incorporate those. And instead of trying to cram everything on one side, we're like, okay, spheres go here and we're going to rip 
rip out your whole front entrance. <laughs> He's like, okay. What we did here by doing that, now we've got this awesome fountainscape on the right side. We're coming down through this deep stream and we're going across with this wooden bridge. These are all reclaimed timbers that Matt had laying behind the shed for about a dozen years. Constructed a framework underneath, built the bridge, and then Manuel came and he put this flagging patio in. So he's got these gigantic stairs leading up to the house, which I'm calling like a drawbridge, and it just feels incredible. What an entrance to a house, right? Yeah. Now this is where the mystery actually starts, guys. So as you come in here, you see the spears over here, you see the urns over there, you see these steps. There's not a person in the world, you've heard me say this a thousand times, that can resist crossing a bridge. Once you've gotten to the bridge, you discover this pathway over there. So here's that mystery. Right, you're talking about mystery. So now we're going down this DG path. It's leading us around the back of this other urn fountainscape. And as you cross through here, in between all the hollies and the magnolias and the cedar, you can just catch glimpses of that water bubbling out of that urns, which just looks incredible, right? Leading you over to what is a ginormous fire pit. You know what else I love, Jack? I love the difference in the feeling. Like, we're out there in the sun. Instantly, as we get underneath the canopy of these trees. 10 degrees. It feels 10, 15 degrees yeah. cooler. So it's not just different sounds, it's different feelings yep. as you're moving through this, which is just so cool. That brings us to the canopy, right? One of the big design elements that we wanted to work around when we first laid this out, Brian, was utilizing this grove of trees. And it's just for this reason, because you're in Texas. It gets hot, <laughs> hot as hell here. <laughs> so having the trees is super important because you couldn't really enjoy the outside if you didn't have some shade. Being under here, the feel, and then the fire pit. Just looking from here, you're catching urns, you're catching the spheres, and you got all this beautiful rock work. What's cool about this fire pit is Matt actually sourced these bricks locally. These all came from different surrounding towns here in Texas. You can see the names of some of the bricks where they came from. So Matt wanted to tie in a little bit of Texas history when he was building this fire pit. But now we've got this sunken in feel, right? Three and a half foot high wall on the backside with a big berm, which will eventually get planted. And then you've got the seat wall on the other side, which butts right up to that awesome stream that we built. So I love this spot. Sometimes when you're creating a feature this size, it's important to change the feeling. It's important to change sound. And when you're in this area here, things really quiet down. It's just a very relaxing feeling. And I think when you're underneath all this shade, the idea of like kind of sitting in here and taking a nap is a realistic idea. But we want to continue that journey with you guys and continue the mystery. So of course we've got an exit here that comes out. As you come through here, you're discovering a lot more of the stream. And then one of my favorite parts of this entire feature, this waterfall. This waterfall was not an easy waterfall to build at all. It's a combination of a couple rocks making it look like one big giant boulder. So you can even see the way this rock naturally has a shelf in here. When we set this rock, we really wanted to make sure water was gonna come up on top of this shelf. If this rock was sitting two inches higher, this would have been dry. And we wanted to make it look like the water eroded this away and then fell back over this way. And then this rock here, has this natural bowl in it. Water came down off of this, scoured this out, and then as gravel got in here, just like gravel would in nature, it kind of rolls around, rounding out the gravel, more importantly, carving out this pocket inside this before it drops again. A lot going on in this small space, but to me, this is one of the most natural looking waterfalls we've ever built together. I also love the fact that we took advantage of this small space and did these stepping stones coming across. So you can really stop here, and it's a big enough stepping stone to comfortably do this without looking down at your feet. Not for long, but a little <laughs> bit. And then I think the other thing that we did when we're building a stream like this, the key is to take inspiration from nature. So for example, if you had a waterfall dropping down like this, what has it done to the earth below it? It scoured that out. So it was really important for us to do some deeper water in here. Eventually, if you had a deep pocket, it gets shallow again someplace. So we come over here and you can see how shallow it gets in this area and through here. And then it ripples across the different rock and gravel as that stream makes a hard right turn. Think to yourself as you're building a stream, again, what has the water done in nature? And so with your shovel, it sounds corny, but pretend you're the water. So if water's come down this way, made a hard turn on this back bank, usually the water has scoured out the earth a little bit, making it deeper on this side than it is on the other side. So do that with your shovel. Make sure areas of the stream have different depths, different sounds, different textures, and then really just go out and hike some streams in nature to get some more inspiration. Let's continue that journey through the pathway. So from this area, you really start getting inspired because now I can start seeing the pond that we created and seeing some bigger waterfalls off in the distance, really pulling you now through the property. So I continue to walk on this crushed granite pathway, getting back around here. I really sort of appreciating, I don't know if you guys remember this from the original video, but we wanted Matt to take what was an old horse stable and convert it into his office. And he did an 
unbelievable job. I mean, take a look at that. So from here, I've got two options. I can either go right and over to the big giant falls or I can come this way. And really what's happening for me personally is I'm drawn this way because I see the house. I see the giant bridge slash stepping stones that we put in here and everybody wants to get closer to the water. So I come down into here. I look to my side, got another really, really natural looking waterfall. These two big boulders come down into a V, plunge in there, even separated. Tried to make this rock look like it fell off of this this chunk right here like the water got in there and eventually separated this whole area giving us a really cool deep babbly brook sound which is really the sound that I'm more often looking for than that big high treble type sound but we get that really cool rock in here we also start discovering some of the amazing fish that he's put in here over time we come over into here and then we get to that shaded place that is so necessary in Texas Yeah. You said it, Brian. We're in the shade. You can actually enjoy this yard from here. We're covered. I better not stick my hands in your <laughs> We're covered by the deck that's above. Ceiling fans are circulating the air, making it feel really relaxing. And you've got chairs. So one of the design elements that we incorporated here was this retaining wall that's built inside the pond. And the reason we did that was so we could bring this flagstone patio right out over it. This stone is cantilevered out over, over the water here. Super clean right to the bottom. The fish are swimming right up to the edge like we thought they would. This is just a great spot to be in interactive sitting in a chair you literally are living lake life in your front yard and look at that yeah that's so awesome So Brian, when you and I were looking at this waterfall, really the main focal point was looking from Matt's office. And it's far away. So from Matt's office to this waterfall, you're 150 plus feet away. So we had to create something grand scale. At the same time, we had to think to ourselves, do we want to make it so that it's so overpowering that we only accomplish our goal from one area? No. We knew this was going to happen. We had to make it so that it was appealing when you're down here as well. The sound coming off those falls is just perfect, if you ask me. We're flowing somewhere in like 15,000 gallon an hour range, but the way it's bouncing off the rocks and shooting off in front of it just fits the space perfectly. And flanking it with those large boulders brings everything to scale. You're talking over a hundred truckloads of soil brought in <laughs> to build this berm. Think about that for a minute. Hundred truckloads of soil to build that berm, but it was necessary. To put it all in perspective, we don't end up with a volcano out here, right? Which is definitely not what's going on now. Falling into that pool, then coming down into the pond. It's a serene, park-like looking experience. So one of the things that was really important with this waterfall is to create a lot of sound. A little different than that babbly brook, it's got a lot of treble sound. The reason we wanted to create so much more sound on this waterfall was because the viewing area is way over there. So we wanted to make sure that that sound carried from there all the way into the lower and upper office area there, which is really our Airbnb for the week. But to do that, you have to have a lot more bouncing water, hitting more and more rock along the way. I also love the simplicity again of the waterfall. Big giant rock on the right, took advantage of a natural lead in there, big giant rock on the left, and then just let the water do what it wants to do in between. This is our wetland filter up on top. The wetland filter is like the kidney of the pond. This is what's keeping that whole pond crystal clear. Now this pond gets kind of brown because of all the decomposing leaf matter that's falling in here on a regular basis. All that stuff gets sucked across the surface and pulled over into our intake bay. So let's go take a look at that intake bay and then I'm gonna show you my favorite part of this water feature. So this is where we stayed for the duration of this project. You walk up these stairs, come back up in here. Jack's just packing his stuff up. Time to go. My bed was over in here. Jack's was over in there. Eventually he'll get his office stuff in here and get this all decorated out. We had our own little coffee set up over here, refrigerator. This is actually a fold out bed. Every morning I'd wake up, look out these windows to the canopy of these trees, make my morning coffee, come out here, open this up, and then check out the view from up above. It's the only place I get to see the entire project. So there's those waterfalls off in the distance. You can see some of his massive koi down in here. And then I really enjoy the look of the stream from up in here. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed the little blast from the past walkthrough of the project that we created you know, over a year ago. It's always fun to come back here. It keeps evolving. It keeps planting more and more stuff. I can't wait to come back here again and see how much different it looks as the plants mature and mature and mature over time. Hey, we've got another big project to do. So let's get back over to that fountainscape because it's turning out to be one of the most epic fountainscapes we've ever done. Let's get back to work. Thank you.